welcome back i'm back i know it's been so many months so many there has been a lot going on here in the world i tried to film back in january but i came down with some quite significantly bad cold which i seem to be getting every time i want to film my nose just wants to bug up and be like no you're not allowed you're not allowed to film you're not allowed to do anything so i've just been like i'll hold off until i feel better and i'm in the mood to film and here we are it's now april of course <laughs> also i completely forgot to mention this do you like the new intro yeah what do you guys think so i really hope that you guys have been doing well if you haven't seen my last video i went on an adventure with my partner well we went to norwich and norfolk in the uk and we stayed in a yurt and it was really good fun it was a nice time away it was my first time kind of doing vlogs so i wanted to see how that went so if you want to see more vlogs of like us going away or whatever please let me know on that video <laughs> just go comment go view it i'll leave it in the eye i think it's this corner it'll be in if not it'll be this corner but yeah let us know if you want to see more vlogs i want to be able to improve upon things every time i do it so yeah if you'd like to see another one just go on that video go give it a watch give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you want to see more i have a quite a lot of videos coming up uh everything's kind of in the works i've got a couple of projects that are taking quite a long time to finish um because they were monster tasks the other thing is is uh my cat storm has decided to come join us so you might hear him yell at me for you know being here can you come say hello say hello to the youtubes Say hello. It's like, Mum, I just want fuss. Just want all the fuss. I'm surprised you're even staying here. I actually want to move on to my next project because obviously I did the uh, packing one, which the first one did amazing. Loads of people really loved it, and I realise now that it's four parts is too long. I I definitely made a mistake there. It's kind of a learning curve for me as well. As you guys know, I tend to do videos about LARP, but also I want to do videos that are relating to other nerdy things. So um, I'm eventually going to cover those subjects. And the other big thing that I want to mention is that my partner, Pixie, is actually going to be joining me on this channel in future. Reviewing, talking, discussing, nerdy things doing different projects learning things if there's anything that you guys want us to do please put it in the comment section so today i'm starting a new series and this is the start of the cp factions so i want to go through all the cp factions and discuss what each of them are like so the look the feel, your a little bit of history, maybe some knowledge that you need to know before you join that faction. Like it's, it's kind of fundamental. Because reading is what? Fundamental. I can't wait to see how this turns out. Whether it has religion or some sort of belief system that you need to follow as part of your character. If you don't know, I'm Zana and I've been LARPing since 2012. Today's faction that we're going to be discussing is the Wolves. The Wolves is a faction that I actually started in and I took a brief break and went to a different faction and then I came back again in the last few years. So it's a faction that is kind of dear to my heart so I thought I'd start where I know. But before I get into any more details, let's get into kit. This is my current character i've kind of amped her up a bit for the video just a warning <laughs> because i wanted her to look really cool i made this dress myself i will insert shots here so this is my character runa she is slowly becoming a viking witch 
When I do my makeup like this, I feel like a Viking princess. Let me read you a snippet from the Curious Pastimes website. The wolves of Norskar are a vibrant society who do nothing by half measures. Whether sending enemies to death beneath an axe blade or singing tales of heroism around a campfire, these people, born of a harsh land, make staunch allies and formidable foes. In other words, we're a Viking inspired faction. Norska is a land of ice where high peaks and snowy plains lead to an existence of hardship. The people of the land are proud to live in such a harsh climate. Indeed, they welcome it. As all characters, 100% agree. We're like, ah, oh, yes, cold weather, beautiful, ah, oh, amazing. And the whole weather, oh, it's too warm, it's too warm. As all characters, that is. Out of character, we are stuffing every last part of our body with hand warmers and like adding as many layers on as possible because we as humans are freezing. <laughs> the capital city of Odentheim is the home of the ruling council of all the land, where the hearth gather together to decide the ruleship of the people. Huskars, Karls and Jarls lead their people, often warriors of great renown or wielding dangerous frostborn magics. They stand firmly with those they lead, weapons in hand, screaming death into the face of their enemies. While Norska is predominantly human, ogres, trolls and beast creatures all come together to support the war host. The war host is essentially the heroes of Norska travelling together in a campaign. The campaign is during the up season, there is no official downtime with Curious Pastimes, but in non-plague times there are extra outside events so you get banquets or maybe a faction event where it's literally just your faction going to your homelands to sort out a problem and that's a little bit of extra larp in the winter months skulls healers and brewers accompanying the war host for their love of storytelling is only matched by their love of battle their warriors will need aid and celebrations are forever to be had honor is not taken lightly very much a people of their word an oath uttered is utterly sacrosanct. Make sure of your facts if you intend to declare someone an oath breaker in Norska and expect to have to defend your statement with your sword. Whether celebrating in battle or around the warmth of a fire, they are ever ready to stand for what they believe or die with blade in hand and meet their gods. Oaths are so important to the honour of the wolves. So if you are the one taking the oath, you take that as literally as possible. You need to make sure that you are careful who you're swearing an oath to. There are groups that do ask you to swear oaths and that is fine as long as you as your character is fine with those oaths. You are allowed to know what they are before you swear to them I believe but it's worth checking what the oaths are before you agree to it. Oaths aren't necessarily a bad thing either. Sometimes it's actually quite good. It, it can kind of bond you together with others. It can create some more role play. But if you intend to break an oath, make sure that you are prepared to deal with those role play consequences. The way to sum up what the wolves truly are is we are a faction based on real world Vikings. And if you like singing, if you like telling stories, if you like fighting, even if you're none of those things, this could be the faction for you if you like the kind of Viking setting. The next section I want to cover is actually the histories and the sagas and Ragnarok. So the way that we view the histories, the sagas, Ragnarok, it has happened, it is happening, and it will happen and you kind of use them as a way to kind of discuss things so if something's happening and you're like oh you know that time when Thor lost his hammer and he had to dress up as Freya and almost marry a giant that has happened it is happening and it will happen so you could be like oh has he lost his hammer because this is going to happen or is Thor having to dress up in a wedding dress right now to go and see it to get his hammer back and try not to marry this Jotun. I believe it's a Jotun. One thing to remember is that there are so many variations on every story in the sagas. Everyone has a different way of explaining it or um, telling it. Try and get a brief kind of understanding as to what 
goes on during Ragnarok and some of the sagas with the gods bits like those are all super important because that is how you will connect with other people in the faction by your love of the stories and by love of the gods. It doesn't hurt you to learn some of the sagas and Ragnarok and, and some of the stories that go along because even if you only learn one, that is one that you can go talk to another person about. You can be like, oh, I really, really love this story about the wall being built around Asgard um, and Loki turning into a mare. That story, that story is quite fun. <laughs> Or you could go as far back as my favourite ritualist if you're out there, Space Cow. Space Cow. Space Cow. Uh, the Space Cow basically comes up at the, the creation of the world of the Nine Realms. So it's really worth... <laughs> it's not called the Space Cow, we just all really struggle to say the real name. I'm really sorry Scandinavians who might be watching this that we butcher your language. Anyways, I've been rambling. Let's move on to the gods, which I've kind of covered in the histories. There is absolutely zero atheism in the wolves. You believe in the gods because they walk among you. They have talked to us, they have guided us, they've smited us. Uh, <laughs> we go to them for advice, they come to us for things. There is no way that you can be like, the gods don't exist and be a wolf. Like you could come from a different faction and be in a different faction and be like, yeah, but are they really? Like, that's fine. <laughs> that is 100% fine, but you cannot be in the wolves and not believe in the gods. So the gods are actually based off the Norse pantheon. I don't believe there are any differences, but there is, there is one disclaimer I want to add. Thor and Loki are not brothers. This is not Marvel. Marvel kind of butchered a lot, a little bit, a lot of the kind of Norse pantheon. So if you're a new player learning about the Norse pantheon, do not take it from Marvel. <laughs> because it's wrong unfortunately. One of the books that my fellow role players like to suggest to help people know the gods, know the stories, is this book. It is called The Penguin Book of Norse Myths. I would like to go through all the gods one day for CP but like maybe in the terms of the different factions and what the beliefs and what it means specifically but if I do that now I will be here all day. The next thing I want to discuss is ranks. So at Curious Pastimes every faction has a command structure. Sometimes this can be in character and sometimes this can be an out of character thing but there are both there are terms for both so it's worth knowing what's what. So you have your 1IC, 2IC and 3IC and they are your one in command, two in command, three in command. So they are meant to be the leaders for most factions this will apply but there are a couple where this doesn't really apply in terms of in character world politics. So those are kind of like your NPCs, your non-player characters. Let me just read these to you. Lord Wolf, High Thane and Thane. And then you have your player ranks. It's Jarl, Karl, Huskarl, Feyred and Vintner. From Jarl down to Vintner, you as a player could earn one of those ranks. You can get it by working hard in the faction, but if you don't want the rank, you don't have to have it. At the beginning of every game, every player gets two silver coins or two stell. Rank will add on to that. And the other thing rank cards do is it stops you running away from specific calls. Uh, rank can be quite a good way to stash some money so that you could buy something important for yourself, for the faction, for somebody else. You could help someone else with what they need. Personally, I love the idea of giving money to someone who needs it to enhance their roleplay. Like, that is the best thing about LARP is when you can enhance someone else's roleplay just by doing something so small. But, and this is the key thing to remember, 
Rank does not have to be an important part of your game. The next section is the races of Norska. So this is kind of important because not all races that are available at CP are appropriate in each faction. Here's the loose guide to the various races and how they are perceived by Norskins. Generally, Norskins are belligerent xenophobes when it comes to non-humans. Um, any race that is non-human may come up against a manner of ill feeling. This varies from human to human, so some humans could be all right, like Runa's best friend is a wolfkin. So with all races at CP, your character must conform to the minimum phys rep standard. First up, human, the dominant and most populous race created by the gods eons ago by their worshippers. They were everywhere in Norska. Beastmen or beastkin, many wrote Norska and in some places are integrated into Norskan society. There are numerous beastmen communities in the land that are friendly with others that are not. Try to choose a race thematic to the land slash the gods. So a raven or a crow for Odin, a goat man for Thor, wolfkin, you know, something that would live in Scandinavia. Next up is a dwarf. These are descendants of the crafters mentioned in the sagas. The dwarves of old were malign schemers, ready to steal or put a curse on someone for no reason at all. For this, they have been maligned since the days of old, but past endeavours of a few dwarves in the war host has put them in a much better standing. Elf of Alfheim. Some believe that the Light Elves are a people who would sneak amongst the humans of Midgard and steal away their children. Over the centuries, these stories and actions have faded and they have become accepted members of society and live within communities in small numbers. Goblins. Goblins are exceedingly rare. They have never settled in Norska in any numbers, nor has a community ever been discovered. Those that do appear are here due to unusual circumstances. Ogre. These are not normally seen within Norska, but some believe that they could be descendants, bloodkin to the giants, but they are rare. Orc. As with goblins, they have never settled here. There are other lands in the world that they have settled and have never bothered to leave. Those that are here, like goblins, are here under very unusual circumstances. Swart Elf or Swart Elfheim. Swart or Dark Elves have been enemies since the sagas told of their race. They have been at war with Norska on many occasions and are seen as a natural enemy. Recent interactions have slightly lessened this belief. Troll. Old enemies from the sagas. Troll characters are rare. They could easily come under suspicion if they ventured into the lands. Many Norskans still label them as the monsters who lure unwitting travellers to their deaths, yet there are others who have accepted them as other folk. So I've obviously given you quite a lot of pictures and information. I've kind of given you a look and feel, but like this next section is about look and feel of the faction. The Wolves are based on a real Viking society, like real life Viking society. So there is plenty of material out there for you to kind of explore. And there's quite a few centuries, so you have a lot of styles to choose from. Whatever race you decide to play, just think about how you're going to style it into a Norskin fashion or a Viking fashion, whatever's easiest for you to understand. Obviously it's understandable that not everyone can afford to change kit if they are new to LARP and their character dies or if you're coming from a different faction, but you can get some pretty simple or cheap tunics as backup for monstering as your next character, that kind of thing. Or if you were a skilled person and know how to sew, make your own tunic. Um, or add, you know, a bit of fur to your kit. Just think more like a Viking. So I actually went to a few of the wolves uh, myself and was like, are there any additional pointers you'd give to a new person? I actually have some answers from them. People in the wolves are warm and welcoming, but due to the size of the faction, you may not know or feel you can get involved. The best thing to do is sit by the fire or in the meat hall, which is essentially our command tent. It's a big green tent. The other things you could do is listen to people, try and absorb as much information as you can. You could volunteer for jobs. You can speak to the people in the faction, see if there's anything that 
you could do for the faction or them. That is my kind of beginner's guide to the Curious Pastimes faction, the wolves. Any other links, I will leave them down in the description box below and make sure that you have access to everything you could possibly want. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I know it's been a really long way. If you did want a video on the Curious Pastimes gods for the wolves, leave a comment down below. If you liked this video, please give it a giant thumbs up ax it in the face i don't care just hit it and if you want more content like this or similar content about larp please consider hitting that subscribe button right down there and don't forget to hit the little bell notification so that you can get all of the notifications for when my videos go up stay foxy i want to give a special thanks and credit to curious pastimes and slender pictures oliver facey flash aka steve mitchell justin mckee Weekend Heroes, Lucy DeGraff Johnson, for all the videos and pictures that we used in this video.